Hello ladies and gentlemen, Michael here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to play a game of good news, bad news, good news. And let's just jump right in. Now I bet you can guess a bit of it because of the title graphic in the background. <coughs> But uh, let's pretend we didn't see that and do this in story mode. Now, first off, a couple of months back, we're talking uh, March. I actually did a video. It might look kind of familiar. Uh, but this video was all about the potential that Zenko was going to be open source. They had just done a new release of it. And there were some indications from the company Silicon Studios that they were, in fact, thinking about open sourcing the Zenko game engine. Now, if you've never heard of it, Zenko is a very cool uh, C-sharp powered high graphic fidelity game game engine and Silicon Studios is actually pretty well established. They make a number of middleware tools plus some uh, popular JRPG style games. They're a Japanese studio and they're actually uh, derived from Silicon Graphics ultimately. I think they used to be Silicon Graphics Japan years ago. So this is a company with some pedigree. So this is not an engine you should take lightly. However, they changed their business model on it and it kind of looked like they were giving up and that's kind of sad. Um, so that was back in March. Well today, uh, I bet you, bet you can guess based off the title graph, but first off, Zenko 3.0 was just released and it is now open source. And the coolest thing is it's now open sourced under the MIT license, which as far as we go with what is my favorite open source license as an end user, MIT. MIT basically means do what you will. Um, you, you, you absolve them of responsibility, a couple of requirements, but that's about it. Uh, you can just about do whatever you want with the derived source code. So a very liberal permissive license and that yeah, pretty cool across the board to be honest. So uh, Zenko 3 is now here and now open source MIT licensed. And so where's the bad news? Well, Silicon Studios is giving up. Uh, basically Silicon Studios no longer supports Zenko. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the bad news, but we'll get back to the good news in a second. Now, along with the open sourcing, uh, Zenko 3.0 was also released. Now, a lot of that whole 3.0 branding was all about the fact that we are now moving over to um, not being Silicon Studios anymore. But there's a couple of other things that have come on this release. Uh, first off, we've got uh, a new project system. Um, we've got video support now. It is tentative, so it's not necessarily on all platforms yet. Um, give it some time. It's a new feature. Uh, they didn't want to hold up the release to polish this one off, so expect this to prove over time. There is now skin and hair rendering, which is pretty cool. And then across the board, and if you're already a Zenko user, this is going to have a pretty profound but minimal impact on you, if that makes sense. Uh, basically, they've removed all of the references to Silicon Studio out from the namespaces, which I hate anyway, so just call it Zenko to start with. Then you don't have to do this stuff if you rebrand your company. But anyways, they removed all the Silicon Studio stuff from the namespaces, so all of your import code is going to have to be updated if you're an existing uh, user. It's the kind of thing you could do with a find and replace it. Not a really big deal. Basically, Silicon Studio dot has been removed from all of the, uh, the namespaces. So now it's just Zenko. Uh, so Silicon Studio dot core is now Zenko dot core. Studio, studio, Silicon Studio dot Zenko is now simply just Zenko and a new project system. So there's not a whole lot of new functionality in this release, but obviously this is uh, the big news here is that it is now a fully open source project. And again, keep in mind that um, Silicon Studios is now no longer maintaining it. So it's up to the community now what's going to happen with this guy. But there's also some news on that front. Um, Virgil, 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 I think Virgil with no E. I'll call it Virgil. Uh, anyways, Virgil, Virgil um, is one of the original developers on this uh engine, I believe. And so he's no longer with Silicon Studios, but he's been really pushing hard to get this open source to happen. And he is now, at least for a little bit of time, a couple of months, going to work full time on Silicon Studio, uh, sorry, on the, on the Zenko game engine. So you do have you from pretty much any major open source project, you need to have a couple of principles. You need to have like, principal developers. And in this particular case, if you are a diehard Zenko user, you have it, or at least you have the opportunity for it. But he needs to eat, breathe, all that other stuff, and that stuff requires money. Well, breathing, I guess, doesn't, but eating definitely does, rent does, all those other things does. So he's launched a Patreon page. So if you are an avid Zenko supporter and you want to see this project uh, thrive and succeed as an open source project, well, he's got a Patreon page up now to basically support future development of uh, the uh, the Zenko game engine. So, you know, things like server hosting, his own wage, that kind of stuff. So if you want to see this happen, uh, he's got a page up now on Patreon. Uh, definitely um, 
I mean, check that out if you're interested in seeing um, the Zenkos game engine succeed as an open source project. And that's kind of kind of critical, to be honest. As I mentioned, every successful open source project has one or two core lead developers that work on it quite a bit. And this is your opportunity. And, and if this doesn't happen, you're basically going to have to have the community rally around it. So again, if you're interested in Zenko, this is definitely uh, a project you should consider checking out and backing. And finally, the code is now up on um, GitHub. I'll toss this in the link. Well, actually, I'll, I'll be making a news story about this. So I'll put all the appropriate links, the Patreon page, all that inside of that story. Now, on top of that, I've also done some uh, past content on the Zenko game engine. It used to be called the Paradox engine, which they they renamed because, well, Paradox Interactive and there was another engine called Paradox. It was a very generic common name. So it caused a lot of confusion. So they switched it over to Zenko. But back when it was Paradox, I did a five or a six part tutorial series on how to work with it that is mostly still accurate. So I will toss that link down below. I also toss in the video um, that I did of it earlier. So if you wanna get a little bit of hands-on time uh, with the Zenko game engine, have an idea of what you're dealing with, I will throw that down below. Uh, but it is now a completely open source, ready to use, ad very, very pretty game engine. Um, it's along the lines of what you think. It's C-sharp on the back end. It's uh, PBR 3D high-end fidelity graphics. Um, so there's now a new open source player in town now. It really kind of all depends on if there's a community to build around it. Um, the open source game engine space is suddenly getting quite crowded. Uh, but I, I, again, I think that's a good thing. As long as there's a community out there that's willing to support it, this looks like a very interesting project. And to be honest, it just seemed kind of like Silicon Studios had two options, basically let it die or open source it. So I'm glad they went with um, open source it because you know in this day and age it's getting harder and harder to justify selling a game engine so i can understand why they tried it they made a great product but it is a crowded space uh but to the inevitable people that are going to ask me why would i choose this over unity well that is definitely now one big plus in its favor it is now free and it is now open source so if you're all about that c-sharp thing uh but you want something a little bit smaller more contained but with beautiful graphics um and free, then definitely consider checking out the Zenko game engine. And again, I'll toss a couple videos down below that or in the link that's going to be linked down below so that you can get some more ideas of exactly what Zenko brings to the table. It is worth a check out. It is a, it is an easy to use and beautiful game engine that can make some very, very nice results. Uh, it's, it's mature. It's very, if you've never used it before, you might be shocked at basically how well established this engine actually is. So it's time to see, will this thing thrive as an open source project or is it on the way to death? It'd be interesting to find that one out. I really hope it thrives. I love seeing more and more game engine choices out there. And we now have another free open source option. So that's it. That is the newly released uh, Zenko 3.0 is now open sourced under the MIT license. Have you worked with Zenko? What do you think of it? Are you thinking about working with Zenko or are you just sick of having too many damn choices? Let me know all of that down below. All right. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.